We were standing there. Okay. We're somewhere else. It's a little chaotic. It feels new, but not in a bad way. Okay. What's chaotic about it? I guess more than chaotic. It's just a lot of energy, a lot of excitement, and lots of people sharing and eagerness. The, the chaos is more trying to organize everybody's eagerness to share and to to help out. Okay. And as you're feeling this and experiencing this, do you feel you're in a body? It's a lighter body. Okay. Tell me about that. It's longer. It's a more translucent feeling. It's lighter. Okay. We don't... We don't walk. We can walk if we want to, but we don't have to walk. What do you do? We just get to where we want to get to. It's irrelevant. So you just kind of think about where you want to be and you're there? Yes. Okay. All right. And do you have feet? If we want to. Okay. So you're manifesting like an energy body or something? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And you say we ascended. Can you walk me through that process, how that happened for you? There was the bridge, but the bridge is... It doesn't feel like a physical bridge. It feels more like a symbolic bridge. Okay. It's an energetic bridge. And before you walked across that bridge, what was your perception of embodiment. Were you in a body? I think so, yes. Okay. Is it a body that you recognize? It's a, it was a long process. First, we still had the same body. We used the same body. Okay. But as we ascended, we were able, we were taught, we were guided on lightening up. So it, it was not an abrupt, it was not an abrupt transition. It was a gradual transition. Okay. You say you were taught about lightening up. Who taught you? More ascended. Okay. All right. And you said the process was long. Was this like more than a lifetime or within a single lifetime? It feels like it's it's kind of it's kind of both. It's like it's like the same lifetime. You could say it's the same lifetime. It's like a stream of lifetimes. You just just move one into another but there's no there's no re-embodiment in the way that we come into this planet now okay so this ascension is this occurring from this planet is this the bridge that you're stepping on is coming to this planet you could say that but it's not really coming to a planet it feels like it's 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 an it's an offering to this planet almost. Okay. It's not physical. It's not. It's an option. Okay. Do you feel like that's here now? Yeah, it's been here now for a really long time. Yeah. Okay. Just people didn't know about it as much. Okay. So um, these higher ascended people that bring the teachings, can
can you tell us about these teachings? What are they? How do they help us lighten up? We work with our energy more. We don't eat as much. We are more intentional of how we use the energy. Like the way we eat, we don't eat the way people eat here. Okay. What do you eat? At first, we eat, we don't eat meat anymore. We just eat vegetables. But even that has to stop too. Okay. It's Wait, more, keep going. I'm it's sorry. more about intention. It's more about. More about the food, the animals and vegetables and things we eat are more of a vehicle for the energy we need. And we just have to figure out and believe that we can have that energy without the without the body, without the vehicle without the flesh we've been taught that we need this physical things and so we believe it and so therefore we have to eat it otherwise we would not get nutrition but it's already it's in the air you don't need anything you have to You're believe it you're saying right now people could just stop eating and could live on air? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's not literally in the air. It's, it's just there. Okay. So the process is stop eating meat, just eat vegetables, and stop eating vegetables. What happens after you stop eating vegetables? It's just breathing. Conscious breathing is, is conscious directing of your energy. The only reason we have to eat is because we don't know how to direct our energy. And these guides come and show us how to do that? Yes. Okay, so... Let's walk through the bridge process. You're standing at one edge of the bridge. You've stopped eating, um, and now you want to move across the bridge into the, the energy realms. Take us through that. It's more of belief. It's just like convincing ourselves, like really convincing ourselves. That it's possible, that it's true. The guides demonstrate first. They come in dreams to some. Others see them in real life. Not many, though. Okay. So, from being in, in a body to being in the energy realms, how does that process happen? How do you discard the body and just become energy? It's, you almost don't even notice it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you were eight and now you're 30 something and you don't really know like how that happened kind of, it just kind of happened. Okay. It's seamless. All right. And is that happening to people now? Yes. Okay. All right. So this that you're experiencing, is this going to happen in this lifetime for you? I think so. Okay. All right. Once you're on the other side of the bridge, you said you saw yourself as 
energy and you could manifest this long body. Tell me about that. What do you do over there on that side? We're learning to manipulate our energy more consciously. How do you do that? There's more immediacy in what we conjure up. So it's it's just it's an extension of what we're doing already. But it's just more immediate. There's not as much lag. So as you become more adept they help you break down some barriers or something that allows you to manifest more quickly because you're more protected from your own ignorance. Okay. So all of these energy bodies that you have and everyone else has, do you, do you know that you're energy? Yes. And how does the interactions feel between you and these other energy bodies? Does it feel real or...? It's light. It's, it's a choice, but it's mostly light. It's like... It's like silk brushing up against silk, if you touch. It's like water, meeting water. Okay. And do you all gather in a central location? If we want to, there is that option. There's okay. many locations. All right. Um, since you're here, let's go to a point where something important is happening. Tell me about that. We are experimenting with creating worlds. Oh. How does that work? It's a lot of energy. It's heavy. How do you create a world? There's many ways, but they are guiding us sort of like compartments it's like the, it's like it's like dreaming it's like whenever you go to sleep and you forget that you're asleep and you're doing things in your dream but you have control so you need you need separation you need a I don't know it's individual work at first okay well let's do this let's move forward just a little bit to where this world is created and now you're looking at it tell me about it it's really heavy I just I feel it in my whole like being but it's not like uncomfortably heavy it just feels dense and that density is somehow intertwined with my energy okay and you in relationship to this world Where's the world in relationship to you and your consciousness? I want to say it's one and the same, but I'm not sure I understand that. Okay. So as you're you're looking at this world, do you feel like you are the world? It's... It's not a world per se. It's like like a cell it's like in the most the most general way of the term of a cell it's like a cell it's just 
like a boundary. It's like a shell. Okay. It's just the space for worlds, for for individual like creation. And are we talking about like a literal physical planet, or is this something energetic? It can. Eventually. But first, it's just the cell. Okay. What happens after that? Depends on what what you want to create. It's like art. Okay. In this instance, what did you create? I'm still experimenting. There's just energy moving inside the cell. Oh, okay. I'm learning to manipulate that energy inside the cell. All right. You say cell. Define cell. What is that? A, a single organism? A single thing? Or what is that? It's... Uh, it's like, it's just a separation, like, it's not physical, it's just an energetic separation, it's almost like, just so you can concentrate, almost. You, you mean like a barrier membrane? Yeah, okay. but it's not necessarily physical, it's just, it's kind of like ignoring things very well. So you've created this energetic barrier that you can then create within that is unaffected by the stuff outside? Yes. Okay. All right. I follow now. All right. Um, let's move forward a little bit to where you've learned to create and you've created something inside this cell. What did you make? It looks like like a little globe, kind of like a transparent planet, and there's life inside it, but it's very rudimentary, it's very basic. It's It's alive for the purpose, for my own, just for me. It's alive for me to learn. It's very basic consciousness. Okay. Is it a single consciousness, or are there multiple consciousnesses in this thing? There's multiple. Okay. They just bounce around. And. Did they volunteer for this, or where'd these other consciousnesses come from? It's not yet voluntary. It's eventually they can have volition. If it's they just bounce around, they. Okay, so these are lower density consciousnesses that haven't gained the ability to make choices? Yes. Okay, all right. I follow that. Okay. Well, let's move forward some. You've experimented with this construct. You've learned the lessons of this construct, and you've moved into doing something else. Tell me what you're doing. Teaching, guiding, helping others ascend. Oh. And where are you doing this? It's not a place, but it's the same sort of community. Okay. And how are you doing this? How are you guiding and teaching?
through dreams, through... There's different levels of people or beings that I'm interacting with. It depends. But through dreams... You mean you're interacting with incarnated people in their dreams? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. And when you do this, what kind of dreams do you give them? I mean, what, what do these dreams consist of? What are they like? It's not really a dream. I, as an energy exchange, they interpret it however they need to. Okay. So they dream whatever their dream is, but you're actually imparting energy to them? Yes. Okay, and what does this energy do for them that you give them? It helps remember, and the idea is that they can remember more. Okay. And this helps them ascend? Yes. I understand. Okay, and in this last lifetime we took him to, we took him to his uh, the ascension point. Was that a continuation of his current lifetime, or was that something yeah, separate? Always is. It's a continuation. It's just a smoother continuation than he's been used to. Okay. It's a longer continuation. We took him to a spot where he was starting to create worlds. Can you explain that to him just a little bit, how he was doing that and what that process was? It's manipulating his own energy. It's enough focus. It's, it's very, very focused energy. It's, it's like splitting his own energy and focusing his own energy. And watching it, he can undo it and do it as he pleases. He's learning how to manipulate it. Okay. And that perspective that he was holding, what consciousness? Was he a planetary conscious, a system, or what was he doing? It's basic consciousness. It's just practice. Okay. So as he was splitting his energy and creating these new consciousnesses, what happened to those? Did he dissolve them? or They dissolve. They don't feel anything. Okay. All right. Anything else about his creation that you were showing him that he needs to know? It's his voluntary creation. That's, that's the basic consciousness is an extension of himself. So you could say it's voluntary. Once it's separated... Hmm. There's a tendency to want to call it its own consciousness, but it's still an extension of his own. So voluntary or non-voluntary is depending on the perspective. It's always voluntary. It's his own. But as a separate world, as a separate bubble, as a separate creation, you could say it's non-voluntary once. Moving further, if you expand on that creation, there comes a point where it can seem you could call it less voluntary and more. It's, it's more basic consciousness, more lower frequency consciousness, there's not as much awareness. It will become more aware over time. Right. Right. The lower density consciousness. Yes. Right. Well, once these lower density consciousnesses attain self-awareness, we have to allow them their own journey. Yes. Okay. And that's the process that he was engaged in, learning how to do that? Yes, it's a choice. Okay. 